Greetings Bible School students. I hope you're well and today we'll be looking at topic 55, the power of the blessing. And as we start, let's welcome the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, come and teach us, come and lead us, come and bring revelation to our hearts, our spirits, come and open the eyes of our understanding, come and make the scripture so alive in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. It is so awesome to be here. Now, when we talk about a blessing, this is something that we know even before we uh, for some of us who took some time before we gave our life to Christ, this is a principle the world lives on. But it's a biblical principle that the world has actually adopted. I am telling you right now, even as we are growing up as young, there was so much power in a blessing. There was so much power in a blessing of authority, in a blessing of family. And we have lived in this place because we understand that a blessing has so much power. Now, today we are going to be looking at the power that is in the biblical blessing. And I want us to dig further in scriptures and find this blessing according to the word of God. And you know what I want you to do? I also want you to practice the word of God. A parent who is going to be studying this, uh, a, a child, you are a son and a physical daughter of someone. Practice this. If you are someone in a place of authority, any place of authority or leadership, you might be a teacher over students. You might be a principal. You might be a, a director of a business. You might be a team leader. You might be a community leader. In whatever sphere you find yourself, I pray that you practice this blessing because this is a very powerful principle. It works. I want to say that it works wonderfully and powerfully if we are able to understand how it ought to work. And if we are able to see in the word of God, you will see the power of this blessing and how important it was with the people who came before us in the word of God. Now, the definition of the word blessing is to celebrate with praises, to consecrate a thing with Solomon prayers, favored of God, blessed. I also Googled something here and I know some of you are going like Googled it. Yes, I wanted to also say something more. Now, when you check out the internet regarding blessing, it says God's favor and protection. And it's so awesome to see that they are giving back up scriptures actually on Google regarding the definition of the word blessing. They are actually bringing the origin of this word again to the Bible. So you can Google it and see. Now, when I was Googling it, it was really talking about God's favor, protection, and things around that, but they were not bringing any reference from anywhere else except the word of God. So the origin of blessing is the Bible. Okay. The one that we are reading right now, not any other book, but the Bible. So blessing that we can see in Jesus's life. Jesus began his ministry through the announcement of a blessing. Matthew chapter 3 and verses 17. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And this we could see that Jesus is being announced by the father. And the first announcement that is given referring to Jesus is a blessing upon his, his life being given to us as the children, as the children of the father or given to us as human beings. He was given to us as a blessing and heavens, the father himself spoke a blessing upon the son. Now we can see here his most popular teaching, which is the Beatitudes, as a series of blessings accompanied by rewards. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 to verse 11. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now look at these words because they are so important. Because for every blessed, Jesus ends with a reward. Verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn. For they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger 
and thirst for righteousness. What will be their reward? For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when you revel, when they revile and persecute you, say all kinds of things against you falsely for my sake. He, and then we can see here, it, you remember I've read from verse 3 to verse 11, but what I want to bring out here regarding the scriptures of blessing that you can see here is that Jesus gives us something here, a full chapter of blessed. Okay. And Jesus is saying to us, if we are able to understand that blessings will lead to rewards, some of the normal things that we want to resist, according to Matthew chapter 5, from verse 3 to verse 11, are things that will bring us reward. For example, persecution. Okay. For example, when you mourn, when you are meek, according to the world, these are not things that can position you for a blessing. But according to Jesus, these are blessings that will bring a reward. So what do I want to say right now? Blessings will bring a reward. When you position yourself in a place to be blessed, they will be spiritual rewards and physical rewards that will come to you. Okay, so he blessed, Jesus blessed children that he met. Matthew chapter 10, verses 16. And he took them up in his arms. He put his hands on them and blessed them. You can see here, Jesus looked at the little children and he didn't just speak to them. He laid out his hands and put his hands upon them and spoke a blessing. Remember what is blessing? Favor and protection of God, consecrating them. And this was, should I call, I say, a daily lifestyle for Jesus because he meets these children and he doesn't, doesn't just say hello, he blessed them. And I want us to learn from this as children of God. If Jesus lived daily as a lifestyle, blessing people, let us also learn to bless people audibly like outward speak it we understand you inside you are blessing but speak it in the spiritual atmosphere speak it physically and that is what jesus did he did not just keep it inside himself he blessed the little children we can also see here when you read the word of god it says here his last act also was to speak a blessing upon his followers and that is luke chapter 24 verse 50 to 51 and he led them out as far as bethany he lifted up his hands and blessed them 51 and it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven his followers are called on to continue the art of blessing and we can see this first peter chapter 3 verse 8 to verse 9 and it says, finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion on one another. Love as brethren. Be tender-hearted and cautious, not returning evil for evil or reviving for reviling. And on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. So what does this mean? When we bless, we also inherit a blessing. The last thing Jesus did when he was leaving his followers and he was taken up, he blessed them. He spoke favor upon them. He spoke protection upon them. He consecrated them as he did that because he knew that they should carry his presence. And when we do the same thing to others, we actually get blessed back. What we give is what to receive and that we have seen clearly in Matthew chapter 5 Romans chapter 12 and verses 14 bless those who persecute you bless do not curse 
remember importantly too, as a child of God, don't choose to curse those who persecute you or those who curse you. Choose again to bless. Why are we blessing? Because we are living through the example of Jesus Christ. That is why we are called children of God. Jesus Christ has modeled us, showed us how to live and how to live according to his character and nature. So what do we do when our enemies um, prosecute us or curse us? We bless them and you speak it physically. You know, something so amazing I remember it is something that the Holy Spirit taught me um, a couple of years ago uh, when um, I was going through a time whereby I was receiving a lot of persecution. The enemy just arose persecution. But there was this specific person who it was so hard. I struggled so hard to forgive them. Like I, I, I got an offense and it turned from an offense to something big in my heart. Because you know what? The moment an offense, offense comes to you and you don't immediately disregard it, you are going to find it grow into something big. Now, I have a feeling that whatever they did and said, which right now I can't remember correctly, but I want to use this example, um, added up to something that has happened to me before. And I was trying to find out why I was so offended with this specific person when I've gone through so much persecution or words, or you know what I mean, and I've not been really fully offended. And I struggled so much to, for, to just let go of what this person had done to me. And I asked the Lord. I prayed. I, I prayed for healing over my heart. I, I forgave. I spoke again and again. God, I forgive. God, I release the person. I release the words. And it was so hard. And it became so extremely hard. And I had to ask the Holy Spirit to give me a strategy. And you know what was amazing? Something very small. The hospital said to me, Connie, pray a blessing upon every area of their life. I sat there and I said, all right. Okay. So let's do that. So I prayed a blessing over their life, over their family, over their marriage, anything I could think about. And when I was done, I said, okay, Lord, I'm done. And the Holy Spirit said to me, it didn't come from the depth of your heart. Pray for a blessing like you are praying for yourself and your family. Pray like it is for you. And I stepped back a bit and I retreated and I prayed from the depth of my heart for this person and her family. And I prayed for everything. <laughs> Some of the things I didn't know if she, you know, I have prayed for their parents. I didn't even know if their parents were alive. And there was such a release, such a release because the enemy is disarmed when you and I go to, to bless those who have persecuted us and literally do good by blessing those who have been evil to us and bringing a blessing and speaking a blessing to those who have cast us. Now, it is so important that you and I can learn to bless those who persecute us. It is a weapon, should I say, it is a strategy that I'm still using today in my life. When someone kind of throws something at me and it's not settling, I immediately block it by praying for them. Because you know what? Maybe they are going through something in their heart and what they are going through must not project and reflect on me. So I immediately pray for them to find healing. I immediately pray for them to, 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 to that God will work in their hearts with what they are going through. People are going through such difficult situation and some are not mature enough to know how to work through them. I am also non perfect. Maybe I, and I believe not, maybe I have also, through maybe one way or another, spoken something and hurt someone uh, carelessly. And because of that, I have to show forth grace unto Christians and non Christians. I have to make a choice to bless. And I want to finish by saying to you in that statement, in that view, that blessing is a choice. Jesus chose to bless while he was being persecuted. Who could have imagined being on that cross 
at that particular time. And Jesus says, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Who could have literally imagined saying that? And this is the heart of Jesus. He blesses where he's being persecuted. Now let's look further into the concept of blessing. Blessing passes something from a greater to a lesser. Okay, It can be spiritual, it can be in every form, but it passes something from a greater to a lesser. It can also pass something from an elder to the younger. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 7. Now beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. And those who are better in any form, you are reminded today to bless. In every form you can bless. Bless if God has given you the ability financially. Bless spiritually. Bless in any form that you can. We can also bless through wisdom. We can bless through our time. There are so many things we can use to bless those who are lesser than us. You know what it teaches you? It teaches you to be grateful. It brings about gratitude. And in the end, it also brings about rewards from God. Blessings will cancel out curses. You are commanded to bless in order to receive a blessing. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary blessing, knowing that you are called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. Bless those that curse you, Matthew chapter 5 verse 44. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those that hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. So when we talk about a blessing, you can speak it physically with your lips, but you can even take a step further according to Matthew chapter 5 verse 44. It talks about do good. So there is works that can be done and to bless for those who have persecuted you and cursed you. The Bible says go even above just speaking a blessing and do good. That means actions in place. How do I bless? Now here we can see that they are a public proclamation always spoken boldly with authority and confidence. And that is we speaking blessings upon people. They are the fact track to God's attention. The record is endless throughout the Bible of blessings spoken over covenant children. He blessed Noah and his sons after the flood. And you can see this in Genesis chapter 9 and verse 1. He blessed Abraham. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to verse 3. Jacob um, was also blessed. Um, Genesis, let me go back a bit. <laughs> so let's see. The record is endless throughout the Bible of blessings spoken over covenant children. Now he blessed Noah and his sons after the flood. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 1. He blessed Abraham. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to verse 3. Jacob, God blessed too in Genesis chapter 32 verse 24 to 32. And we can see also King David in 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 29, which says, Now therefore let it please you to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever before. You for you, O Lord, have spoken it, and with your blessing let the house, your servant, be blessed forever and so on. You bless your enemies publicly, not just privately, or else it will only be keeping your heart clean and not a blessing. So let's first start with the first part. So the first part we can see through these people got God's attention. And because of that, they were blessed by the Lord. And I've just read you the different people. King David, uh, Abraham, and so on were blessed by God. Now when we talk about you blessing your enemies, you have to do it publicly, not hidden. Because if you do it hidden, then you are just... um keeping your heart clean and it's not a blessing. Now, another command that has been given to us to bless 
is fathers should bless your children. Jesus, we can see here, according to the word of God, let them be blessed and highly favored. They will lack. So what do we see here? We can see that it is a desire for God that fathers should bless their children. Now, according to the word of God, we can see a lot of scriptures that talk about areas that our children should be blessed. And this includes, let them be blessed and be highly favored. That is the first blessing. They will lack no good thing. As a father and as a parent, speak this upon your child. You should also speak upon your child that they will have wisdom and understanding, that good health and a long life, that they will fulfill their destiny, that they will be ahead and not a tail, they will be above and not beneath, they will be first and not last, they will be they will lend and not borrow, they will have the tongue of the land, and they will have the mind of Christ. We can see here the blessing of Abraham and the anointing of Jesus. According to this, it is so important that we as fathers, now you might not be a physical father yet, or you might not have a physical father right now. Maybe your father is gone, but you have a spiritual father. Now, spiritual fathers who are listening to me and watching me, it is so important to bless spiritual children. Now, biological fathers, let us take up this role and let us bless our children. Let us speak blessings. I've just named out a couple of them. You can get them through the notes, but this is a guideline. There's much more you can speak over your child or over your children. Now, if you are looking at me and you are saying, all right, I am a single mom. And I want to say to you, also you, with the blessings of God, you can speak over your children. You are, according to the principles of God, given so much authority and anointing to speak a blessing over your children. And as you speak that blessing over your children, I want to say to you, it is transferred to the next generation, to the fourth generation. It is a blessing that is transferred. Why? Because God is a covenant keeping God. We could see this in the Bible through Abraham. We saw how the blessings moved because of the blessings of Abraham. Now, as long as you are a child of God, you have inherited the blessings of God. You have the favor protection of God. Your mom Mouth is anointed for you to speak those blessings, pass it on to the next generation to carry them. Let us speak of our children to be servants of God, that our children will serve God in whichever sphere that God has given them to operate in, you know, and let us speak these blessings because I want to say to you, these blessings that we speak will come to pass. They will not go in vain. Why? Because they are based on scriptures and the word of God will not return to him void. It will fulfill that which it has been sent to do. The blessings of Abraham and the anointing of Jesus cover you are still speaking blessings over your children that they will have the blessings of abraham the anointing of jesus cover your children with the blood of jesus the enemy and his plans will be shattered remember you are saying all this upon your child upon your children now if you don't have any children it is fine if you can stand in the gap and speak over children out there. So many children don't have parents who can speak a blessing upon them because they are not in a space to understand the principles that we are teaching you. But when you go in a place of intercession and you stand in the gap on, on behalf of God, you speak over children and these blessings that you speak in the spiritual realm, yes, they can come to pass. Prayer is done, but we see physical results from a place of intercession. So it is so important for us to remember those who do not have parents right now or who might have physical parents, but those parents don't have this knowledge and they can't, they have not spoken those blessings upon them. Let us stand in the gap and speak these blessings upon those who do not have the opportunity to receive this. Now we can see here that again, the blessings is given and the blessings given 
to bless your family. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. So there's a blessing that can also be given upon your family. The Lord bless you and keep you. And this was the priestly blessing that was given in numbers and this we speak upon our families may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you may the lord lift up his consciences upon you and give you peace and we can see again when we go back to the word of god we can see also that there were some people here in the word of god who passed on a blessing uh, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob, and this is Hebrews, blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things that were to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of his sons, so Joseph, he, each of the sons of Joseph, and worshipped, leaning on top of his staff. Two, we can see, were listed before of their faith in blessing their children, and that is Hebrews chapter 11, verse twenty. To 21 by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things that were to come by faith Jacob when he was dying blessed each of his sons of Joseph and worshiped leaning on the top of his staff now when you look at this it is evident that we can see people regarded in Hebrews that were actually able to bless their sons and the next generation in summary, we bless because we have been blessed as children of God. So let's go and let's practice the word of God. Let us freely bless others around us. God bless you.